Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to use uh, ORCAT 16.6 PSPICE in order to solve an AC steady state problem using the AC um, simulation capability. And as an example, let's use problem 9.57 in the textbook, uh, which is just a simple two-loop circuit with two voltage sources. Uh, we have VG1 given by 25 sine 400T plus 143. 130 degrees of VG2 is a cosine, different amplitude and different phase, but still omega is 400T. Uh, so omega being 400 radians per second, I can calculate the frequency of that, which is 63.662 uh, hertz. That is omega over 2 pi, gives me the frequency in hertz, or 1 over seconds. Okay, so we can solve this using MathCAD. I've already done this here. Um, we have a capacitor has impedance of minus 500J at 400 radians per second for 50 microfarads and inductor 50 millihenries as an inductance of 20J. Okay, and we find that the voltage across the 150 ohm resistor turns out to be just about purely real, about 15 volts. Okay, so let's go ahead and use ORCAD SPICE to simulate this circuit. So I'm going to just go ahead and start a, uh, a new project in SPICE. Um, um, it's called AC Steady State. Let's find, um, let's create a, um, anyways, just create a blank project is fine. Okay, and then we come into um, uh, PSPICE schematic. And what we want to do is we want to build this circuit for an AC analysis. So we're going to pick and place our parts. But for the voltage source, what we're going to use is we're going to use the VAC source. Um, so I type in VAC on my uh, part, double click, and I can place it. And I have two voltage sources, uh, one, two, which I can put on the schematic. And I'll hit escape to turn that off. Now, voltage sources are VAC. If I want a current source, I would use IAC, okay? But here we just have two voltage sources. And uh, I do want to point out with IAC is a little confusing because instead of an arrow, it has a squiggly, has a plus minus. The plus means the current is flowing in towards that plus direction uh, for a zero phase. Okay, minus is basically it was flowing down within minus one amplitude, but so the current flows from minus to plus with a positive current. The voltage source VAC, I should point out, has got a high potential, low potential on it with a squiggly. So for a positive voltage, it would be high potential uh, on the top, low potential on the bottom. Okay, next, we have a capacitor, which we know is just C. So I can double click on a C analog. Uh, C analog is fine or discrete, doesn't really matter. I'll put that on the bench. And then I need an inductor, which is just L. Double click my L analog. And I have a resistor, which is just an R. Choose R analog or discrete, doesn't matter. I'll just use analog. Flip that with Control R. Remember, rotates it. Put it on, and then finally we're going to need a ground. So I'll just put zero uh, ground, and just put that down here. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to wire this up. as we would per normal, nothing different here. There we go. And I hit escape to get out of the wiring, and of course if I click on any of these, I see they're connected to ground. Um, ha, I forgot one wire here. Put the red dot, and click. And again, uh, these are all one node, so everything looks like it's connected correctly. Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so now I have the circuit topology, and what I need to do is enter in the values. Okay, so I'll spread this out a little bit, so I need some room there. Okay, so for the capacitor, we need 50 microfarads, so I've got 50 U for microfarads. For the inductor, again, I'm going to double-click on the number to change this value. So this is 50 millihenries, so I put 50 with a little m, no space, uh, for 50 millihenries. 
and the resistor is 150 ohms. So it changes 150. Okay. Um, we'll zoom in here a little bit so I get a better view. Next, we're going to need to um, define my AC sources. So the AC source allows you to have a DC offset. That's what that zero volts DC is, or just an AC amplitude. So we have no DC offset, so I'm going to leave the DC to be zero valued. For the AC source, I'm going to put in here, okay, so my first source, VG1, is 25 angle 53.13 degrees. So I'm going to put in a 25 VAC. Come over to the right, I'm going to put a space, 53.13, and that's the angle, and it knows that it's in degrees. Okay, so 25 VAC, space, 53.13 degrees. Okay, so that's how I input the voltage with a phase shift. Now notice it's 53 because a sine with a phase 143 is equivalent to a cosine of 143.13 minus 90 degrees, which is 53.13. Same thing on V2. Uh, this has a 15 volt amplitude, or I'm sorry, 18.03 amplitude VAC space with an angle 33.69. So that's my angle. And I hit OK. All right. So now I have everything entered in uh, with my voltage, magnitude, and phase, as well as my capacitance, inductance values, and resistor value. Next, I'm going to go under piece, the P spice, and we're going to create a new simulation profile for this one, or I could edit the existing one. So it's AC analysis. It's fine. I'll just call it some benign name. And now I can edit that simulation profile. Again, it comes up down here. Whoops. One of these. Okay. Um, and I'm going to choose an AC sweep. All right. So we're going to do an AC sweep, which means it's going to only be solving in the phaser domain. And an AC sweep allows me to sweep frequency, so I can gives me a start and a stop frequency. And I can put this on a log scale or linear scale. For here, we'll just use a linear scale. It's fine. And so let's, we're just going to simulate one point. So I'm just going to put a start frequency of 63.662. This is in hertz. Uh, that's my first point. And then my second point, my end frequency is the same, 63.662. I'm going to simulate one point. Okay. So I can choose AC sweep, linear, start frequency, to be the frequency I want, and to be the frequency that I want, 63.662 hertz. Apply, I'm done. And the next, uh, let's say this again, but let's put a voltage probe, because we're asked to find V0 across the 15 ohm resistor. So I'll put a voltage probe, control R to move it around, convenient uh, direction, and I'll connect it to the node above R1, okay? All right, now we're ready to simulate this. So let's go ahead and hit sim, run pSpice. Okay, there it goes. So I see this blinking down here. Open that up, and it's a one point simulation, so I'm only seeing one point, okay? And voila, the value is 15 volts. Now, what I'm looking at though here which just says V of R1, uh, it's, it's giving me the absolute value or the magnitude. So let's go ahead and look at, we'll add a couple traces. So we can do an add a trace. And let's look at the real part, which turns out to be the same here. So I'm going to put an R for real part. It's an operator. And then let's look at V of R1, node 1, which is the top voltage. And I'm going to hit OK. And that, you know, superimposes on this one up here. And I'm going to add another trace, which is the imaginary part. Okay. So here I'm going to put select IMG for imaginary part. And I'm going to click V of R11. OK. And it's zero. All right. So, you know, 
but basically um, you know, what I have here is the real and the imaginary part which are the same uh, for each of these okay now the other thing is I can write this out to a data file so I can do an export let's go ahead and export the um, uh, probe data I believe or actually let's just export, export a text file which will have the probe data so text and it's going to output these three values and I'll give it a file name and I can choose a directory if I want um, okay so I'll just throw out my documents file so I see it I'm just going to call this probe data dot it'll be dot text okay I'll hit OK. And now let's go to my documents. I'll find this file, probe data.txt. And here we go, there's a frequency. Here's V. Um, and anyways, it's giving me 15 for the, for the magnitude. And I don't understand why the real part is zero. Let's take a look. Flyer out of me. Okay. Um, Oh, I see. No, I, I understand. I goofed up. Um, I'm seeing this R1 of 2. It's node 2, right? So sometimes it's good to see me goof. So you may make the same goof. So let's again do an export uh, text file. And I'll change this. And we're going to put in a... Um, being a pain, so I'll come over here again and add trace. Let's put a real part of V of R1, node 2, and then the add a trace, and I'll put the imaginary part of V R1 at node 2. There we go. Okay. And let's export this to our text file. Now I'll delete the R1s, so we're only exporting the R1 at node 2. I'll just export it to that same file. Okay, replace, come back, and there we go. And here's the real part, and here's the imaginary part. Okay of the voltage. So we can export this data file and look at the actual values uh, in a file. All right, well that's if I'm looking at this one frequency. What if I want to sweep frequencies now? So let's go ahead and say, well, let's look over a range of frequencies and let's, simulate, let's uh, edit our simulation profile. Again, AC sweep. And let's go from um, over a full decade or you know an order of magnitude so two orders of magnitude so we'll go over from 60.3662 to 636.62 and let's go ahead and simulate um, a couple hundred points okay and apply now when I do my simulation and I'm going to see the magnitude over that full frequency range, okay? And the point in the middle, you know, where I'm crossing about 15 volts down here is where I'm getting, um, uh, you know, my simulation value from at 66 point, or 63.66 uh, hertz. So let's go ahead and, this is the magnitude, let's go ahead and add a couple traces here. So let's add the real part. Oops real part, just type it, and we had V at R1 at node 2, we add that trace, let's all, and that's the real part. Let's also go ahead and add the trace for the imaginary part. Okay, so I have these three traces. All right, so 
This is the imaginary part and the real part um, of, the, um, of the signal as a function of frequency now. Now, somehow I'd say, okay, this trace is a little hard to see, so let's go ahead and right click on this trace and uh, choose trace property. Let's make the width of these lines a little thicker. Okay, so I just change that width to a thicker thickness so I can see it. Click on this one, right click, trace property, I can change the colors too if I like. Uh, make it a little more visible. Um, and I can change the width, and the pattern, add symbols, and so on. Okay. So that's kind of a convenient thing to do. Um, okay. So this allows me to view the voltage across R0 as a function of frequency. Okay. You can learn a little bit more about this in circuits too, where you're looking at frequency responsive circuits, is what we would call this. Um, I can also dump a data file. I can export this to a text file. And again, let's, we'll dump our trace values. And let's, and let's do this probe. Uh, we'll call this sweep. And I'll go over to my document folder. I'll look at that probe sweep. Now here I have as a function of frequency, the magnitude, the real part, and the imaginary part of the resistor voltage. Um, and so here's the value close to 63.66. I'd have to add in more points to get it exactly. Um, but, you know, I see at this point it's pretty much about 15 volts plus about J0, okay, uh, which corresponds roughly. Uh, here's the imaginary part. Um, to the value the signal right at this location here. So the other thing you can do is you could add a cursor to this, this toggle cursor. See how we have a cursor right here? And I can move this. Let's move it right around this value here. Okay. And now I come down here and I see cursor values. And I see the real imaginary parts. Um, and basically it's, you know, 15 plus J255 at uh, the frequency of 63.29 hertz. Okay. So I can toggle around through this with a, um, uh, with a cursor, which is very convenient. Okay. All right. The, um, all right. So that's basically uh, a summary of how I would use SPICE to simulate the AC steady state response of a circuit.